Dear audience, we all recognize the urgency of change in the building sector and from different perspectives, we all share working on that field. With this conference, we would like to shift the spotlight on the meta level of research, the methods. Understood in the original meaning of the word, the word methodos, the path or operation of an inquiry, actually the path to something. In that sense, I would like to structure the introduction as a setup for research itself, and you will see where the experiment occurs. Concerning first the theme of con um, research, the theme of constructive experimentation, we are convinced that this part is part of any architect's DNA. In the age of resource and climate crisis, this is acquiring a new and critical relevance. In 2014, Annette Spiro, who is here, hello, <laughs> um, expressed her wish to replace security by experimentation, and I quote her work, words, architecture is rooted in knowledge, but equally in empiricism. When Filippo Brunelleschi won the competition for the construction of the Dome of Florence Cathedral, the ground story had already been built, but no one knew how to bridge the 43 meter wide span because since the building of the Pantheon, there hadn't been anywhere near as large a space arched over the dome again. The knowledge of the Roman master builders had been long forgotten and still weren't engineers who knew how to calculate the statics. Nonetheless, the dome was built and still stands today. Brunelleschi's dome embodies three main characteristics that provides analogies to current approaches. Firstly, the form, the steepness of the dome to organize, to use the form to organize optimized load transfer. Secondary, the, secondly, the revolutionary invention of double concentric shells which obviated the need for timber framework scaffolding, and lastly, the flat and interlocked hearing bone of the bricks which saved mass and material. To what extent Brunelleschi was already aware of these solutions when he won the competition, and to what extent they were due to empirical study and experimentation on site is not fully scientifically proven. But the quote, or his quote, because masonry practice teaches, in masonry practice teaches you how to proceed, opens up scope for studying the influence of constructive experimentation. Second, during the preparation for this conference, our encounters with the state of research developed and changed, and we came above all to appreciate the full power of making that is found in Brunelleschi's Dispositivo. When we first published the call for contributions in August 21, we were convinced that the key to structure and method lay in the moment of birth. Quote, quote of our call, in the origin of the research question, the method is already implicit. So it was that the three scenarios emerged, the problem, the idea, and the individual case. By the 15th of March this year, with all your great papers winging their way to us, we knew we were wrong. The submitted proposals were as heterogeneous as architecture his, itself is. We met. The three of us met to delve into work for a two days trip to a project of mine where we intensively discussed the criteria of which to productively structure this conference. When we discovered, what we discovered was that the possible core theme was the framework of each experimental design. Being embedded in a university research activity makes a huge difference compared to being in practice, where experimentation is part of the brief and therefore part of the office language. Moreover, those cases where an architect builds their own house 
as a test procedure, the endeavor is often not only private, but mixed with university activities and a certain practice-based introspection. Third, from this, the research gap between structure and architect-led constructive experiments became obvious. Whereas experimental design juggles between dependent and independent variables to extend that the setting allows a reliable forecast about their results, and whereas artistic experiments uses variance to select mostly intuitively the best solution, the constructive experiment, um, the constructive experiment on the other hand consists of both. You will observe over the next two days how the pendulum is swinging in between them. Fourth, however, the research question quote of our call, how to find instructions for action on how to enable constructive and experimentation from the core of our profession is still to be answered. All great architects perform constructive experiments, but most of them remain untold thanks to the regulations becoming ever stricter and more complicated. Here, it might be important to dissociate ourselves from a certain expectation, although the title Constructive Disobedience sounds seductively like revealing 50 ways to break the law. This is not our main focus. <laughs> what we stand for is a persistent struggle towards architectural quality with the imperative of protecting the planet not for the revolution as a value itself. When I observe my personal heroes, and I'm exceedingly proud to share this knowledge, we can precisely define which norm is being stretched to the boundaries of the feasible. We would have loved to share the following example in form of a drawing, but the architects clearly asked me to show this anonymously due to the possible liabilities. I hope that everyone can appreciate this and I myself would certainly not be here if I wouldn't have experienced the same sword of Damocles. Anyway, in words, in their legally permissible form, water-resistant roofs are flat roofs with an additional insulation outer layer. This particular roof particular roof is a water-resistant concrete roof, one shell with crack bridging reinforcement, sloping, non-hydrophobized. The cavity-free insulation is situated on the inside and the finishing is a vapor permeable vis-a-vis -vis the room. Nonetheless, as I said, uh, the question how we can seri seriously recalibrate and reformulate our constructive standards in the face of climate crisis is the driving force of our conference. For example, when we won the Weimar project in autumn 19, we had no idea if it was even possible to stop Lina, eins zurück. We had no idea um, if it is, was even possible to clad the CLT with a light and shining birch bark, even though we were able to present historical examples of long-lasting executions, it is still not allowed to use this ecological material under the current building regulations. Fifth, therefore, it's an important element in the research method in our constructive experiment was a deep material research involving interviewing international craftsmen and possible suppliers, early self-built test forms, as well as exploratively designing variants, iterative tests, fire tests, and a two by two meter mock-up to gain our clients' confidence. Perhaps surprisingly, all the pain experienced in achieving it vanishes once the object has been completed. To extend this, a further method level is to draw out, herauszeichnen, 
to draw out the knowledge hidden in the built artifact in the form of drawings and plans to make it accessible and verifiable. And any precise documentation of experimental design should include another absolutely vital aspect, namely comptability. Anschlussfähigkeit. This leads us to six, the research aim, the contribution that can be passed on the community of practitioners at large. Matthias Balestrim is currently publishing a dialogical reflection on design research in architecture together with Lydia Gasperoni, which will appear next month, next month. In it, he outlines what he thinks is the minimum expectations of constructive experiments in terms of comptability. Quote, and if you show a successful violation of building regulations, then engineers can follow it up and deal with the technical questions that arise from it. The ongoing, our ongoing measurements in Weimar of the performance of the Birch Park, together with Elisabeth Endres and Mike Seder, should bring more insights regarding building climate control and wood moisture management. These are preliminary studies involving incorporating Birch Park into the variety of viable constructions. The second necessary aptitude in connecting with a community of practitioners is a multiple interconnected person who is willing to intervene in teaching, publishing, and even political process. Thank you, Katarina Benjamin, for joining the team with your outstanding energy. At the TU Braunschweig, we are embedded in a wide range of research activities. They span between robotic manufacturing process with uh, Norman Huck, who's in the audience, and the use of raw wool as roof ceiling by the artist Volker Köberling. You are cordially invited to exchange about and discuss all of these many explorations. And the first and last and indeed most difficult criteria to discuss methodologically within the framework of constructive experiments is quality. Whether a work of architecture is accepted into common canon of architecture lies, lies not in our hands. Not to admonish, but it is important not to forget that architecture is a free bird of fine art, which for me also frames the greater reason why we all have met today. I wish us all a positive critical environment and look forward to all the discussions that emerge. Thank you for your attention and now enjoy constructive disobedience.